What's up, everybody? Thralls Miller here once again. I'm the Croc Nick. I'm Jim and John. And we have an Elm review for you. So another one that came out, and, well, we wanted to kind of get away from the bigger releases because this week had some definitely some bigger releases. Yeah. So we wanted to get into the underground, and uh, we found one that I actually had pre-ordered, and I've been a fan of the band uh, since, I believe, their last full length. We're going to go over the newest offering from Ascarnium with their new album, Dysthymia. This also comes out on the 9th of September on Redefining Darkness Records. This band formed in 2008 in Brazil. This is their third full length overall, though I thought it was an EP because this is only six tracks long and just a little bit under a half an hour, but it's actually a full length. So they actually have uh, two other EPs, I believe, or at least one other EP. They have EPs, that's the main point. Now I got into them uh, pretty much diving through YouTube, finding new music forever ago with their album Inheritus, which is a substantially brutal fucking offering. Yes. This band somehow kind of found a nice sweet spot between like Hate Eternal and Christian, which I mean, if you're in Brazil and you listen to death metal, there's a damn good chance you listen to Christian, as well you should. And I had this on my radar because I wanted to see how they would follow this up. I have uh, both their other full lengths. I think they're both really good. This one is a bit different and it's kind of apparent right from the start. Now, John had never heard this band before. So I jammed him both their last album, Inheritus, and we listened to this one, obviously, because we're reviewing it. And there's definitely a stark difference. So having never heard this band before, so playing their uh, their last offering, just stark differences. Their last offering I found to be more groove laden and more you know chugs and less so heavy on the atmosphere and more heavy on the brutality. Whereas this album, albeit it is still heavy and very dark and very brooding and a guitar tone so thick that they had to use a spatula as a guitar pick. But that kind of like brooding atmosphere and droning, you don't get so much on the last offering as you do on this offering. This one is definitely different. And actually, I, I really wasn't sure what to expect. I mean, I kind of figured that it would be kind of carryover from the last one being, again, that more brutal sound. This embraces atmosphere and I would say almost could be called a blackened death metal album. This really lays on like, you know, atmospheric tremolo riffs in the background. Whereas the first one, like, it's more just brutal chugging, you know, like some relentless deep tremolos, like, you know, still very akin to Morbid Angel. This is definitely akin to Morbid Angel too, but they're more atmospheric side. But you didn't have all these atmospheric tremolos all over the place. No. There wasn't really like this dark foreboding mood and like the oppressive bleak nature of it, which kind of makes sense with the title of this because dysthymia apparently is a type of mild but chronic depression. Like, you're just fucking stuck with it. Yeah. And the way this album sort of drones and labors this atmosphere... I, I mean, that makes sense. It makes sense. I, mean, I, I, I battled depression myself for many years, and uh, that that is... When you're in, like, the throes of it, that's kind of what it feels like. So, I mean, it makes sense. And the song Deluge in Miasma does have kind of a breakup in the monotony as far as the, the constant tremolo is concerned. Um, there are a couple of chuggy moments, there are a couple of more brutal grooves to it. Kind of just a straightforward brutality all of them, almost, which I know is what this band is also known for. Yeah, uh, going through, like again, their albums and comparing to this one, there is a stark difference in terms of like mood, vibe, atmosphere. Even the leads are definitely more atmospheric, you know, versus the Those are very morbid angel. Yeah. The, I mean there's some them. there's some trash <laughs> moments all over here. Yep. The title track on here I think is definitely more like old school death metal, but again with this prevailing atmosphere in here, like the, the production's interesting. Like, there's definitely a lot of reverb on the guitars, but the vocals don't have a tremendous amount in them, but they do layer them occasionally. Occasionally. Yeah. I mean, they're mostly in the background, but they're very gurgled, very yeah. low, just... Oh. Yeah. Vocally, it's kind of comparable to, like, Immolation. Like, it kind of has, like, raw Stolen's roar. Occasionally, you get, like, a higher scream in there or like a higher roar it's not really a scream it's more of a roar yeah there's there's no screams on this album they're either all growls or low gurgles or uh, yeah, yeah. roar. but there's nothing high pitched about this like no. it's very uniformed vocally and i mean musically too like there are a lot of blast beats it kind of labors that and kind of drones these big tremolo riffs because tremolo riffs are almost like the main thing on yes, here yeah. And granted, they build this really creepy, dismal atmosphere, like, 
when they feel a little bit more brutal they're kind of akin to like bloodbath but sometimes they just feel like more just like blackened death metal like uh, you know behemoth yeah i maybe hate. uh hate hate yeah. yeah hate is actually yep. kind of comparable to or even when they're slightly more melodic like a band like god to throne and again a lot of this sort of repeats on a lot of the songs like namely the first two songs Inglorious Demise and Far Beyond Primitive, which Far Beyond Primitive sounds like a combination of like two of my favorite like teen albums there with like Soulflies Primitive and Far Beyond Driven. Like, oh, that's, that's fair. I mean, that is what it reminded me yeah, of. Yeah, that's what I thought of. So. Doesn't sound anything like either one of those yeah. two. But those songs, you know, again, laboring, like a dark, foreboding atmosphere. The dynamics, like when they do break out of it, like there's some clever turnovers in there and like some cool groovier sections. They do stand out. It's kind of like, you know, like two of my favorite bands, Immolation and Incantation. Except, you know, it's Immolation minus the technical flair and wild, unpredictable songwriting. Correct. And then add black metal. Or Incantation plus black metal, but without the giant Death Doom breaks yep. that separate yep. up the yep. dissonant, atonal, fucking hellish nightmares that they create that I absolutely fucking love. Love Incantation. I mean, one thing I can definitely say is the drummer is unrelenting. There is... A constant blast beat. There's a constant double kick flare. There's a lot of cymbal work going on, but it's it's just unrelenting. It, unrelenting in the sense of like Jamie St. Marat from Ulcerate. Yeah. Just that kind of just constant pummeling. Like, did he stop yet? No, man. They're no. like mainlining fucking energy drinks into his fucking arms. Yeah. He played to a, an album full of tremolos. Yeah. This is kind of the rhythm you want, like whether it's you know like blast beats. Or, you know, like double time, like kind of mm -hmm. those, you know, big morbid angel grooves. Even when he slows down, he's doing kind of the Pete Sandoval thing where it's like, no, nah, legs don't fucking stop moving. Right, right. I'll, I'll slow down with the hi-hat or I'll slow down <laughs> with my snare hits, but the legs are still moving at, you know, 250 BPM easily. When it does get like a little more immolation-y, it's in the, the title track. There's just like some sparingly used chugs and some tom hits. Yeah. As accents, and I mean, that's kind of cool. I guess. And it breaks up, like, that song I think is a little bit different where it doesn't labor the black end atmosphere as much. It's more about, like, kind of that old school death metal groove. Yep. There's definitely elements in that song that remind me of, like, more of incantations, like, primordial domination, where it is a little bit more old school, a little bit more groove laden. And I don't know, like, it still manages to give you that, you know, nice dark evil vibe, which is absolutely fucking just you know, labored to fuck on this. I mean, from the from the very get-go, very beginning in Glorious Demise, it, it immediately makes its presence known that this is a heavy, evil album. You yeah. shouldn't feel good listening to this. Yeah, I mean, it, it doesn't let up. The entire album. You're just like, oh, okay, well, ugh. All right, I guess, uh, man, I need a, like, a, like an ice scraper to get all this the sludge and filth off my car. I might need a hug, too. I don't feel so good. I always need a hug. I'm not touching you. Don't touch me. Don't you fucking touch me. <laughs> I need a hug. <laughs> but it does kind of break out of it a little bit, but that is namely for the cover of Into the Grave, originally done by Grave, which I fucking love Grave. So I was really excited to hear their take on it, and honestly, the only real difference is probably their production on here. It's, you know, different than it is yeah. on a fucking album that was released in the 90s. They do a spot on cover. Again, their production, very different. But it, it works like it's you know it still sounds thick still sounds disgusting graves awesome they did a solid fucking job yeah i mean it fits with the overall vibe of the album too like i mean it is a little bit disheartening to me to see that the most chug in this album is actually on the cover but i mean it makes sense so you know I mean, you know, different band, different style there, but they did a really good job at covering it. And overall, I kind of see this as like a kind of growing pains album. Like, all right, we're trying to change our sound. We, you know, still have our core sound about us, but we're adding a lot of elements. And I don't know, I feel like those new elements kind of overtake what they were really good at initially, which was just flat out fucking brutality. I like this, but I like their older material better. So overall, I'm going to give this three stars. It's still really good for what it is. It's just I had different expectations going into this, and I'm going to allow the uh, fact that this could grow on me more the more sure. I listen to it because I definitely pre-ordered this one because I was excited to hear more from this band. But I like the more raw brutality of the older stuff, as I said, and they still squeezed in moments of like bleak, dark atmosphere in there, but they separated it out with different moments. 
that is kind of what this is missing overall are some like really big dynamics to make the songs stand apart. What they're doing is good, it just needs a little bit more variety on it. Overall, if you like flat out brutal music and you like blackened death metal as well as death metal, maybe you're blackened death metal more on the death metal side, definitely check this out. It's a solid album. Again, I'd say check out their earlier stuff too. I think that stuff is just insanely heavy and really fucking awesome too. But again, this is kind of a different kind of album. I don't know if it's indicative of where they're gonna go in the future, but I'd still check it out in the future. I just, you know, again, more dynamics to spice it up, but overall, I think they got a solid bass here. It's a three from me. I don't wanna make this seem like I'm complaining and telling you that this is a bad record, because it's not. I mean, it's, it's heavy, it's dirty, it's evil. It's the things I like about death metal, but, the fact that it lacks a little bit of dynamic, like when we sat down, you know, Nick hyped this up to me and he said, you know, that you want to hear a, a nasty death metal band that sounds like Hate Eternal and Chrissy? And I said, yeah. And while it does, there weren't a lot of things to separate, like the first, like at least three songs, if not closer to four songs. Like it just sounded like one continuous drone with some blast beats. That's great. But I mean, I, I like to see just a little bit more dynamic to break it up to just break the monotony up and you know going back and listening to the album before this i was like well where the fuck was that i get it you want to try new things and i'm all about bands wanting to try new things if you're going to try new things cool just don't completely abandon where you came from and i'm not necessarily saying that they completely abandoned where they came from they just tried something and they labored on it so heavy that it kind of made it like meh this is decent so, if you enjoyed this review, give it a thumbs up, and if you're new to the channel, subscribe, because we do stuff like this all, all the, the time. time. We are also on Patreon. If you'd like to help us out there, there's a link down below to thrallsmetal.com. Within that link, there is a link to our Patreon, and while you're there, if you would like to check out our shop, we have t-shirts for sale. We will also have new stuff in the future. Not sure when, but he's new. wearing, I'm wearing one. Yep. So, hats, maybe shorts. Still think grenades are a great idea. <laughs> as soon as you guys sign some waivers, you know, that's kind of uh, necessary. I feel like we need a special license for that that we're probably not going to get. Although, Ages six and up for the grenades. Yeah, we're strict yeah, on that yeah, one. Yep, we need to throw in that. No five-year-olds. Yeah, you give a five-year-old a grenade, it's though. A party. You know, six-year-olds, yeah. I, All I, the grenades. I, if all there's them. a six-year-old watching right now, just get your mom's credit card. Put a down payment <laughs> on some grenades. It'll be fine. You know their quality if you see the Thralls Metal logo on them. Also, make sure to run when you pull that pin. And as always, thank you all so much for liking, subscribing, following, all that stuff. This is the thank you part. And while I never really say anything different, just more <laughs> stupid shit usually, I am still eternally grateful to all of you out there that have yeah, stuck I mean, with us. and This has become such a big part of our lives and probably one of the cooler things I think I've ever done with myself, which... Doesn't really say a lot, but you're still here. Honestly, and, because I have no life, there was so much room for this to take over my life. <laughs> so thank you for yeah. giving a loser that hangs out in his basement a lot of purpose, I think. Thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, you guys fucking rule. You guys keep us going. And with that, we will catch you later.